I wonder if uh, anyone in the audience have uh, has any questions. I, I see a question from Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Hi, Elif. That was a wonderful talk. Thank you very much. Sorry for me showing up a bit late. Uh, no but I, I think I, I got the I, I got the most interesting parts anyway, so I'm I'm very happy that I could join very shortly. Um, I was I was actually fascinated by the by the performance you showed with a with a debiasing approach here, and I'm I'm a bit astounded actually because in as as far as I got it, and I'm not an expert in this, but I I know that also the, uh, the the 3d structure actually of those molecules plays a role in their in their function in the end which is not really encoded in the text mm -hmm. so i was wondering why is it working so good if this is not in there you know uh, i i know it's uh, it's probably a really bad question to ask because <laughs> the why is always hard to, to answer but I, I was really surprised to see this and I'm very happy to see this actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is uh, I mean so Reza is in the audience and uh, I don't know Marco is also in the audience but this is a question that I'm always asking in fact the so um, chem boost I don't know if you were there for that part of the talk. So that includes some, at least word information and also Smith-Waterman, protein sequence similarity, et cetera. So there is some biology knowledge in there, but with deep DTA, there's nothing. It's just sequence and it still performs very well. So if, if you know the answer, we will be, <laughs> I think that will be really great to uh, add to our papers. But um, uh, there is some hidden knowledge for sure, right? Mm -hmm. So that is contained in these sequences. At the end of the day, uh, these, um, I mean, you Amphenson's famous experiment, the sequence is coding for the final 3D structure. And the sequence is going to, that sequence has all of the content and information about what the final 3D structure is going to look like. So that, that's probably where the, your, the answer to your question lies. But uh, as for, I mean, was it more, more focused on debiasing I, I, or what, was it more focused on? No, no it, was, it was just amazing to see this. I mean, for, for the ligand approach, I can somewhat see that it, it would perform better for very complex molecules, because as you say, if the molecule is easy, probably structure, I mean the, the the chemical the chemical binding in the end somehow the, the the more structure you get in the less possibilities you have maybe that's one of those things I don't know mm -hmm. uh, I would be very much interested whether you have always I know there are some some projects on really learning the 3D structure mm -hmm. and really trying trying to look at this and maybe maybe seeing where comparing with, with the known molecules, if there is already structure information on those, in which case your model is performing better or worse. I mean, you, you just take the, the, the structure model and you take the text model, and then maybe there is some pattern there into at which point uh, the, the, your, your model gets a very good selection on this sub subset and where it doesn't get so i'm not sure but i'm just amazed you know i'm i'm very happy to see this <laughs> was more more of a surprise than anything else really thank you we are we are surprised every day i can uh, <laughs> i think i think and also <laughs> we're always we're always challenging ourselves i mean why or how does it perform so well but you see, this is a huge field, and now transformers have completely sort of revolutionized the whole yeah. space uh, of compound protein compound interaction. And even um, maybe you've seen these um, studies from IBM where they looked at chemical reaction prediction, right? Mm -hmm. So that is like black magic. How does it do it? But it does. <laughs> So, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, the transformers are transforming the, all the fields. <laughs> exactly, exactly. 
That's quite I, amazing. I have a follow-up question, but I will keep shut because there's probably somebody from the audience and otherwise I'll jump in again. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any more questions in the audience? There's some from I Nishant. Think. I see Nishant. Yeah, please just yeah. go ahead and unmute yourself. On so, that. Uh, thanks a lot for the nice talk. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I have a question related to uh, the binary cross entropy that you uh, just showed in your slides. Uh, I was wondering, did you also try dice loss? Because mm -hmm. dice loss is also kind of robust for segmentation and a lot of different applications. Right. So maybe that's performing even better for your application. I'm not so mm -hmm. sure. In fact, we did try dice loss. Maybe he might uh, remember what the result was for that. Because we did yeah. discuss and try it, yeah. Yeah, I think the test loss is a good one because, like, uh, actually, we borrow the idea that transfer the uh, knowledge from the uh, computer vision to natural language processing. So that's actually our uh, like hint to transfer mm -hmm. the uh, DB loss to the NLP engine, uh, NLP part as well. Uh, but for this issue, we didn't try that. Uh, I think there's a difference because uh, for dice, there are some, uh, like it's not very suitable for our case. It can be very helpful for the, in general, for the, uh, like for, for the, uh, not for the text location, but overall for some kind of the, for example, uh, name entity recognition and the other part. So, but I, I think that's very helpful and, and we can also try for that as well. But uh, mm -hmm. I think at the beginning, uh, there should be a reason that we didn't do that uh, I mm -hmm. think that's uh, mainly the purpose difference. Like uh, for our task, it's not very suitable for this one. But mm -hmm. maybe okay. for the other task for the NLP, that be, could be one uh, solution. I can double check the reason and come back to you later. Yeah, sure. Thanks. I was doing this tumor segmentation right now. And for us, dice loss performs better than distributed balance load somehow. So I was mm -hmm. just curious to know how the results look like for the dice loss. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank I you. can imagine that dice loss would perform very well yeah. in binary it's... case, whereas uh, in multi-label case, it might it might be challenging. Well, I also have the multi-label classification because I have like different types of tumor classes. So one is the inner tumor, and then there is this outer tumor core. So it's also performing quite nice with all these kind of classes right now. So multi-class classification is working quite nicely. But is it multi-class or multi-label? Because those are two different things. So we have both multi-label and multi-class. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Really enjoyed it. Thanks, Nishant. Almost for... rabbit holed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Right. That's what we are for. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, are there any other questions in the audience? Okay, I'm, I'm jump, jumping in for one more NLP question. So yeah. um, I was, I was, uh, um, so so here at Dresden, they're get, going a bit crazy now. I have to say. So we are in this uh, Scott's AI um, thing of of building up a, a national data center for big data and AI. And first. We, we just got evaluated and I think it looks pretty good. Um, but they're, one of the big tasks that they have set for themselves is to build an open GPT clone basically, which is, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not really involved in this, but I'm wishing them good luck. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm and, and I'm happy to use the results once they are there. Um, however, I mean there, there there are these amazing performers in 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 general NLP, and I wonder if if you see those as something worthwhile considering, because what what we're doing right now is mainly looking at correlations multiple correlations between uh, between occurrence of, of certain keywords but in the ending and that's not understanding that's not that doesn't give you a larger perspective on how those words are connected together and right now much of our intelligence as you as you already put pointed out and this is working actually quite nicely to put some intelligence into the loss function and and not help help 
help the discovery more. But in the end, understanding the, the, the language environment in which these uh, words occur might be helpful in discovering something in the text. I'm not sure how, how far you want to go with this. And also, of course, the question is, uh, most of the literature, fortunately, is in English. But what about the, the non-English part, you know? Is, if, even a company like yours, uh, I, I'm not sure who is going to do that work in the end. You know, I'm always a bit worried that that we're getting a very English-based bias. Maybe we should also do Chinese, and 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 maybe maybe yeah. Well, India has a lot of English speakers, but you know, just to bro broaden the scope and and look at this, this uh, these are two questions that I'm really wondering: how far can we go with with a pure statistical approach, and how far do we have to go in, in terms of meaning and, and general understanding of the surroundings for these kind of tasks? So for, for scientific literature, is it enough to do statistics? What, what do you think? Okay, uh, great question. I will also ask Arzujan to maybe help me out here uh, because she is the NLP expert in the room. But uh, let me briefly, um, I mean, you did mention, for example, Roche as a company, obviously, this is uh, this is really critical that we do use these, let's say, low resource languages, even though they're clearly not low resource, meaning that Chinese is not low resource. <laughs> <laughs> but there's all of the work in NLP space is being, being performed in English. Therefore, anything that's not English is low resource becomes naturally yeah. low resource, right? So maybe you've uh, heard of this Bander rule, uh, Emily Bander. <laughs> who, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that, I mean, whenever you talk about any kind of work, you have to also specify the language with which you worked, uh, on which you worked, right? So for, for us, it was always English, for sure. So this is um, critical. Yeah. The second thing I do want to mention was he was also... Uh, he and, uh, of course, Arzujan was also there. Uh, we participated in a challenge on Spanish language uh, relation extraction, which, uh, yeah, we were very successful. So that was really satisfying. Uh, it was very interesting, different, right? Uh, at the, but at the end of the day, the, the underlying uh, approaches are similar. Mm. Um, having said this, though, I mean, so now we're getting into linguistic theory, right? Are all of the languages the same? They're not, right? So <laughs> this is also um, uh, an important uh, thing to consider. Uh, so we were, the other day we were talking about how transformers are now performing so much better, or let's say large language models followed by a fine tuning is, performing so much better than all of the NLP uh, smart methodologies, right? So uh, whenever we whenever we read these papers, now it says, you know, we tested these, I don't know, part of speech tagging, blah, blah, all of that. And then they do transformer, uh, sorry, uh, large language models and fine tuning. And that performs better than uh, all of the smart stuff. But I think there's room for both. There's room for okay. both worlds. This is my opinion. I don't know, Arzujan, would you like to say a few words? Uh, Arzujan, I don't think, Michael, you were here, but Arzujan is my long-term uh, collaborator from uh, computer science department at Boston University. So she's uh, an, a world expert in NLP. So I'd like to maybe ask her to say a few words on this topic. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Elif. Uh, and uh, hi all again, thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, and it was a great talk. Thanks a lot, Elif, again. Um, well, we, we have seen an amazing improvement in the entire NLP field with this, uh, this new technology of deep learning and transformers and everything, but uh, there's still a lot to do, I think. Uh, if you would recall the results from the Vapur search engine, uh, Michael, I think you missed it. 
uh, but at the end, error analysis, when we look at the error, error analysis, we see that there are very basic errors uh, that humans would never do, like a simple negation, like two mm -hmm. compounds, a sentence state, stating that two compounds do not uh, bind mm -hmm. to each other. So it's a very simple negation, very simple short sentence. And even though we use like the bird uh, model, the state of the art, like the bio bird model, uh, it wasn't able to understand that negation mm. and uh, classified it as a positive sentence. So there's still some tasks that are very mm. easy for humans, but difficult uh, for even those new um, models. So I guess we should somehow integrate human knowledge or semantic information more uh, and uh, like no mm. knowledge bases or uh, ling somehow encode uh, linguistic knowledge and common sense knowledge into those uh, models. So we uh, currently just uh, feed them with the data, a lot of data, and the more data, the better. Of course, we don't ha have that data for uh, most languages. I mean, we have a lot of data mm -hmm. for English, not for the other languages. But if we could uh, integrate more semantic information and common common sense mm -hmm. knowledge in some way. Uh, probably mm. would have another jump uh, in the field. Mm. I, w I was wondering because the the scientific texts usually are are heavily structured in the sense that they are not like common common text input where you can't infer anything from. And there is also one of the things I'm always a bit uh, um, astounded is that they have a lot of. Um, interplay we we actually did this with all our with all our scientific texts that we are in that we are connecting texts via references so maybe is is this information used in some sense so that you know that uh, for example we had some one, some work here at technical university dresden i don't know what what happened to that actually but i followed it a bit around um, that they try to infer from a text uh, to bring a model. So it was about PDE solving. So we wanted to actually create a database for this is a PDE in different forms. It has a certain name. And usually there is some solution, some technique, some, some algorithm to solve the PDE in a paper. And so what we wanted to take is one, we wanted to take a knowledge base of this information and basically create, okay, these are the different forms a PDE can take, but it's always the same PDE. And those are the, the, the ways we can solve the PDE and create from this an automatic knowledge base. And we used heavily, we, we heavily relied on the, on the structure of these texts. Mm -hmm to get this information and also on the interconnectedness between the different papers. And I'm wondering if, if this additional information sometimes helps. So if you're citing some text in some sense, it has got something to do with the other texts at least. So, so I was wondering if this comes into the analysis or if it's basically paper by paper. Mm -hmm. So far, we have only worked paper by paper. We didn't mm -hmm. really uh, use the interconnections between the papers. Mm -hmm. And actually, we mostly use only the abstract. So there's also yeah, a lot of, of course, information yeah. in the full text, a lot of structure in the full text, tables, figures. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we should use all of this information. And uh, okay. I believe it. Uh, this would help, definitely. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, yeah. One I'm not. I'm just not sure how. <laughs> yeah, how that's the big question. <laughs> not very easy. <laughs> but this is how a researcher would work anyway, right? I mean, uh, this is how you you would work as a researcher by connecting these papers and then building that mind map of yeah. those papers that are connected to each other. That I see. Arthur has written. I know some work from Al Nayai who did that. So, oh. yeah, connect, connections in references and citation maps, right? So, citation maps, I think they are being used, but I don't know how successful they are, to be honest. I don't know. I, I was just thinking because that's easier, you know? It's like, it's, it's not so complicated as finding meaning in a full structure. It just gives you some correlations that might help you, you know? It's, it's, 
just mm -hmm. something that is already set up and it gives you some information. I just don't know how and how successful this is, I have to admit. I'm not an NLP expert. <laughs> Doris has a question. Is there any difficulty you experienced by joining computer science and drug related research together? <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe Razam might be uh, a person to answer this question, but let me try. Um, so uh, I don't know what you mean by drug related research. Maybe is it biological research? Uh, maybe, yeah, okay. Uh, the, the answer is uh, <laughs> yes and no <laughs> for me. Uh, it, so being interdisciplinary is not easy, right? So it, it's not easy in any discipline and in in any interdiscipline, let's say. Um, but if you, once you realize that the underlying question is actually quite similar, uh, then it becomes a more general scientific question and scientific curiosity. Uh, and then you, you I mean, it, it's not, a, at that point, it's not about easy versus hard. It's more about, am I curious about that topic versus not? And then if you're cur curious about some topic, then uh, you want to attack it from multiple angles. This is my uh, answer. Uh, Thanks very much, Alif. I think I love it. It's a it's a great argument for basic science. It's what a great way to to maybe sum up the, <laughs> the today's presentation. Because can, can uh, I have one more question? Yes, Just one yes. small one. I I, I was very I, I was very intrigued by the use of of um, uh, image related technologies for NLP. Mm -hmm. uh, do you also do the other way around? In, indeed, yeah. I, I, <laughs> so sorry, I, 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 probably... I am. I am not. I am not an image expert. So Arthur, you should probably talk to Arthur for that. Question. Okay, then it's fine. He's with us anyway. He's there. <laughs> <laughs> we can follow it up. Yes. <laughs> okay. Perfect. <laughs> but the the two, I, I can I can tell you that I mean, for, as far as I know, the two domains borrow from each other. Uh, yeah quite a lot yeah yeah absolutely there is so much to to uh, share and co-discover in, in both fields mm -hmm. at the moment but, but now i'm shutting up i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much michael thanks very much Elif. with this i would like to thank everyone as well for joining today and uh, special thanks to ajakan for for joining today as well and and providing fantastic expert opinion on, on all this NLP work. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks to everyone and uh, feel free to, to get in touch if you have any following questions. So make sure to make the connection to Elif. Absolutely, happy to answer any questions. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Bye -bye. It was a pleasure. Nice seeing all of you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.